Hello, this is Haku with a bean, and today we are going to be reading the backrooms level on their escape, which is an enigmatic level, which is why it doesn't have a number. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Hello, Morpheus. Are your headaches any better? Morpheus turned to the old woman. Hello, Luce. Greedy old man, looking tired. They haven't got any worse. Don't worry, it's probably a sign of old age. He tried to add a more humorous tone. Oh, don't say that, Morpheus. Fifty years old is nothing and you still look very young. She laughed. I'd go oh, so far as say you look, look like you stepped out of a dream as you never see him to wrinkle. Morpheus smiled, trying to look as healthy as he could. It was important not to lose face, as many in the community were counting on him. You flatter me, dear friend. But deep down, he knew that on the contrary, his headaches were growing in intensity. It had started a few months ago. When he woke up, he could barely catch up with reality. The vivid landscapes and colorful buildings seemed to mingle with his imagination, where he wondered if he had really aroused from his sleep. Will you come Sunday for the neighborhood picnic, my dear? Then unreal ovations invade his life. At times, the old man saw fragments of a city, completely gray, destroyed neighborhoods, sidewalks and alleys without people. Not a dream, but a waking nightmare. Of course I will. Of course, I will cook the apple pie. It's still my specialty. He could see the surrounding hills darkening to a desolate black tone, as if reality realized that the landscape shouldn't be so optimistic and unreal, as if some kind of eternal nightmare were catching up with him from the far reaches of the world. Oh, how delightful! I've always been crazy about your desserts. If you're going to run this town as well as you cook, then we're in good hands. She laughed again. She talked to a little about to his close friends, but he preferred to keep it to himself. In these times of mayoral elections, it was important for him to come across as a strong man, a stable personality, yet given so much to this town and its people. Thank you for your confidence, Luz, but I'm going to have to leave if you now. I've got to get home before five. I'm swamped at the moment. Morpheus had always aspired to become mayor. It seemed a natural next step in what he'd done in this town. Oh, excuse me, then. We'll see you tomorrow anyway. He had always felt like someone important. Someone whose, action, someone whose actions mattered. That is literally everyone. Even if you don't think so. All this time, he'd been helping his town and its people. They appreciated him for his efforts. Some even called him the town's protagonist. A rather ironic nickname given that Morpheus often felt alone even when surrounded by people. As if all around him were pale images that filled the landscape only to give logic to the world around him. No worries, Morpheus added. Had a good, have a good afternoon. But the more important he seemed to the city, the more or his headaches intensified. Yesterday he was having trouble looking at the town hall, which he... Saw the desert ruin, empty of all color, as if it collapsed so hard that not even the light wanted to touch it. The day before, Morpheus was haunted by strange visions, seeing movement all around him, yet unable to discern the source. It was as if matter was stirring, yet not visible to his eyes. These symptoms had been recurring for months. Morpheus likened them to daydreams. For these visions did more than just disturb his day. They populated his nights. His dream journeys were nothing more than the rambles and rambles through his, his deserted city, destroyed, devoid of color or life. Every night he did the same thing, and he was looking for one house in particular. 
a poor hobble with a meager vegetable garden. He couldn't remember what it was or why he needed to find it, but the city seemed to reject him no matter what. So he walked through the desolate hills, empty of all vegetation. He walked under a red sun, which could be discerned under what looked like clouds of ash. Then he heard a mewing. He turned to his right and saw a small wooden hovel with faintly colored wooden walls some ten meters away. A cat stuck it out in front of a wicked gate, which opened into the house and its small vegetable garden, the only place that seemed to harbor any sibilance of life. As he got closer, he could make out the interior, the library filled with dusty books, the rudimentary kitchen seemingly devoid of all modern utensils. But the further he went, the fuzzier the landscape became. The more he felt himself leaving the plain, the matter around him swarming, malleable, until it resembled the multi colored walls of his room in the city. His lights at night time passed him by. I could, he could make out through the window opposite him. He was awake, no longer haunted by this strange dream. At least, until the next night. Now it was as if fragments of his dream were forcing themselves to exist in reality. Or was it the other way around? The bright colors of the neighborhood? It's the almost unrealistic greenery of the hills. The sky, always blue. The inhabitants, always happy and cheerful. Sometimes when he woke up, Orpheus felt more as if his city was a dream. And that the wastelands of his night was, the, was his true reality. Orpheus was drawn from his thoughts by what looked like a completely demolished house in his path. He blinked. Nothing left. The house was just standing as if it, as it was supposed to be. <sighs> Oops. The old man sighed, but started walking again. He could feel his head spinning, as if he hadn't eaten in days. Why did he feel so strange? Everything was always fine around here. Not a t here, not an ounce of anger. Not a negative feeling. Of course, everyday worries could always arise, but they were only minor problems. Never a drama. Always sunshine. That's what feels wrong, Morpheus. That's what's wrong. Feeling dizzy, Morpheus leaned against into the alley's mini street lamps. All around him, people were coming and going, living their own personal lives, oblivious to the old man in a three-piece suit. Who was leaning against the lamppost, looking unwell. The man recognized some of them. There was Betty in the distance with her son Dimitri, who seemed to be returning from the supermarket with his bags full of delightful groceries. There was Joseph, uh, honoring his job as maintenance worker, taking care of his colorful city, making it somehow more perfect. Yet Morpheus had never felt so alone. Figures, both known and unknown, seemed to glide through his life his reality, without stopping to be recognized, as they weren't driven by a personality but by some kind of metaphysical programming whose logic escaped him. He took a breath, leaving the lamppost that held back his body as well as his sanity. The old man continued on his way home, feeling worse than ever, yet he had no health worries. In fact, he couldn't remember ever or having been ill here. The town doctor now seemed illogical, existing only to fill a void, without providing anything logical. How many patients does the doctor see a day? Morpheus couldn't even formulate a hypothesis. If everyone was always perfectly well, why did he exist? But if he didn't exist, wouldn't that be even stranger? Arrived in front of his garden, Morpheus pushed open the e gate to enter his little domain. The door didn't creak, yet he had never or the hinges. Was this normal? Morpheus didn't know. Trembling, he inserted the key into the lock of, of the door to his house. He couldn't say why he locked it every morning when he left, as there had never been a robbery in the neighborhood, or in the city for that matter. What a perfect city. Perfect and unreal. He passed his kitchen without stopping. His mind went as an on making his famous apple pie this time. 
and even bought the necessary ingredients yesterday. He couldn't remember going shopping yet, he knew his fridge was full. Entering his office, he lay down on the sofa. Collapsing would be a better description. Morpheus felt lost. His life seemed to be gradually losing its meaning. His dreams minimized seeing to what he had always thought was his reality. He doubted everything he saw more than ever. Was he dreaming? In the little library in front of him? The passers by he, he could make out from his window? Was he hallucinating the bright green of the lawn outside? The solid blue of the cloudy sky at this sunny time of year? His gaze was drawn onto his computer screen, which featured a photograph of his neighborhood in the background. He glanced at his window. Then out of the background is again. The same red car parked on the left. The same clean stop sign. The same road untouched. Flawless. The same cloud shapes moving across the sky. Morpheus could almost have sworn the two were carved in copies. Because the two visions were separated by several years, if not more. Now I thought of it, Ed never had a wall, a lamp post, or a road junction ha and to be repaired. It was as if every fragment of his life had remained fixed since time immemorial. He blinked. The outside was gray, dull now. The houses were ruins, the stop sign alone, the road littered with holes and irregularities. Then after another wink, Crowley returned, back to light, back to the new, the clean, the strangely immaculate, as if the dull portion of reality were desperately trying to reclaim its rights over the colorful, perfect unreality that was her life. Like a dream supplanting reality, the revenge on of a cold war on a manufactured utopia. The dark dream in this case, or the opposite. Morpheus struggled to his feet and walked over to his computer. He couldn't remember leaving it on before he went for his usual walk, but he didn't care. Opening his word processor, he began to type, still trembling to record what he thought was true. What he thought he'd always let Lived, trying to keep a vestige of what he wanted to be reality, to hold on to it. This city is my house. This city is my home. As I recall, this town has always been the haven it is today. Nothing bad ever happens here. The sky is always blue and shines over the colorful neighborhoods of this place. Amazing, isn't it? It's even stranger because it never seemed out of the ordinary to me or my fellow citizens. I don't recall ever having seen a death here in my... I couldn't even say how many years. Misery I feel as a part of my life have disappeared forever from my memory. We have a doctor, but I don't think I've ever been consulting. We have a cemetery, but I've never bothered to... go there. We have a hospital, but I can't even say where it is. Everything I don't know just doesn't seem to exist. It's really. Anything that could be linked to something negative seems to be self-centered here. And yet every city needs this infrastructure, doesn't it? Every human needs to be cared for to pay homage to their ancestors. So why didn't I think of this before my headaches started? Everyone in this in, is friendly in this town. Nobody crumbles, nobody is ever sad. Everything is always clean too. Although there are cleaners, the cleanliness is surreal. It's not just the streets that can be considered a gleaming. The houses, the stories, everything is perfectly clean. Abnormally so, come to think of it. Speaking of stories, we have a plethora of them. As for the food, it's always divine. I don't know where the fruit, fruits or vegetables come from, but they never seem to rot. The apples I buy to make, make my pies are always flawless. I've never asked Mr. Roger how he does it, and to tell the truth, I don't think I paid much attention to the past before it all started, of course. 
We're in good hands here. The mayor may be retiring, but he's always been close to his fellow citizens. Always ready to help since... Since when, in fact? I don't know. I can't remember. I hope I'll be up to the job if I'm elected. I, Morpheus, have always helped this city. I've always done everything for it. Leading activities, keeping the community alive. None of this ever stressed me out, to tell you the truth. How could I be stressed? Everything here is perfect. Abnormally perfect. But now that I'm running for layer, it's as if all the negativity that is supposed to exist in this town appeared in my dreams. I've never experienced anything like it. Not in... No, not in years. Have I lost track of time? Does it even exist? Every night, and my dreams, I walk through the ruined city. The hills are desolate, the sky is black with soot. The this unearthed place is filled with ideas that could never have existed here, never should have. And for some time now, these dreams have been affecting my life. Why do I sometimes see destroyed buildings? Why do I sometimes see movements that don't exist? And why? Does it all seem so wrong? Why my dreams? What are the dreams? Utopia and reality. Where am I? Who am I? Where is the true I? Morpheus blinked. The monochrome. Then reassuring colors. Then dread dark shades. All destroyed. All is immaculate. All is desolate. All is green. His head hurt. It hurt so much. Moving all around, yet nothing moves. It stops, it goes, and on and on. Memories intermingle and contradict each other. How old is he? Who were his parents? Why was everything always so good here? Why was everything so blue, so utopian? He remembered having a cat, but who was he? He'd never had one. He remembered books, but he'd never read. Landscapes he'd never seen. A dark sky he'd never seen. In the turmoil of paradoxical thoughts, the old man almost collapsed to the ground. What was real? What was it? And why everything that looked so real then just struck him? And more please understand. And so, the avatar was chosen. That got oddly surreal. Anyway, that was the enigmatic backwards level known as a narrow escape. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!